hello, hello. Welcome to our, our Mink Life Motivation Activate Symposium, where we are tasked to help you activate your zone of genius. My name is Monica Henderson, and I am the founder and visionary of this symposium and Mink Life University. And I'm so excited to have a couple of amazing people help me have a conversation with you today. Today, we're activating your zone of genius through personal networking. And I know you might be thinking, well, you know, people talk about networking all the time, but are you finding it hard for you to really connect with people? Today's conversation is going to be all about connecting uh, that, those, those people to your vision so that we can make sure that your business has everything it needs to help me have this conversation. I have the most amazing panelists to help me craft this conversation today. Uh, with me, I have two of my best buds, Yes, two of them. I have Andrea Gortz, who you are used to seeing on a Wednesday with me, except for a couple hours earlier. Uh, she is a wellness thrive. Um, she is the thrive strategist, uh, and also an amazing networker. And she's going to be able to help you talk. Um, really kind of tap into this. So, welcome to the stage today, Andrea. Thank you, Monica. Yeah. Good to no hear. problem. And we have the. Hold on. The follow-up, crap, I just forgot it. She <laughs> is not only the queen of follow-up, but she is the follow-up. Oh, tell me what the new title is. I just forgot it. So follow-up fortune finder. Fortune finder. That's what it is. Because yes, I help that. people find their fortune in the follow-up. In the follow-up, she's an amazing networker and the founder of Connect, Develop, Succeed. And uh, if anybody can help you have craft this conversation about, you know, really tapping into your zone of genius with networking, I have found the ringers that you need to be hearing from today. So um, can't wait to get diving into this topic. But I just want to remind you all that this particular roundtable is actually sponsored by the Grand Connections. And you'll hear from the founder, one of the founders of the Grand Connections a little bit later in this conversation. So as we dive in, I want to say you are also a part of this conversation. So if you're watching, feel free to add content by typing it in that chat and letting us know in your Actual responses will pop up somewhere here on the screen and you will be a part of the conversation. So don't hesitate to jump in. All right, let's get into the topic of the day, which is personal networking. Why personal network in the first place? Why is this so important, particularly in really kind of activating your zone of genius? And I'm going to start with Andrea with this because she's at the top of the two little boxes here. <laughs> okay. Why is it so important? Um, and, you know, you're saying personal networking. So I think I'm going to start from the, the personal networking point of view. Uh, we are gregarious creatures by nature. Like we're wired to congregate and to connect with each other. So personal networking is also analogous to business networking. But if you come from this place of everyone is a potential new best friend, this is what I think I... I sort of have done since I was wee small. But you're like, she's got a knack for networking. I'm like, no, I think I'm just nosy. So I really, <laughs> I really enjoy understanding, meeting new people. I, I, I am so excited by this concept. There's not a group of people that I'm ever like, oh, I can't go in there. I'm like, oh, I wonder who I'm going to meet today. So that is that frame is just for me, like I've made so many friends around the world and things like that, just because I'm curious about how do they live? Where do you eat? Where's a good place to go? You know, and that people call it small talk and I call it connecting because the world is way richer when you know way more things and people outside of yourself. So what, that's why I believe it's important and it fills your spirit with that, that energy, which is awesome. That is accurate. I, I was a kid who was scared of other people. So it's cool that you were able to actually tap into that as, as a young age of like, oh, what's going on with this person? That's that's amazing. And uh, Colleen, you laughed at that. But why, <laughs> why is activating your, how, why is activating your zone of genius through personal networking even important in the first place? Well, I'm going to tap on with Andrea said is that 
I love that concept of, of like gathering friends, right? Cause I, like, I look at it as like the person who has the most connections wins, right? And, but you really need to build those connect, connections and build a relationship. So um, unlike, like when I walk in the room, there's still times where I walk in going, oh, do it. But the minute we say hello, you're, you're done. Like you're my best friend. <laughs> or, you know, it's like, once we get past saying hello, then, you know, it's like, I want to know all about you, what you do. That's the nurture in me coming out. And, and really it's because I want to find out what you do so I can connect you to somebody else who needs, cause we're always about solving problems and we hear about it. And that's, that's the thing that I think that feeds my heart. Um, when we talk about networking, it's the fact that you, someone comes up to you later and go, Oh my God, thank you so much for introducing me to, to Mary. She just really changed my business. And, you know, it's just all sorts of, you know, um, connections you can make there. So, and I think it's, important that you do it personally, right? I've had people come to me and say, Hey, I would love for you to go network for me. And I'm like, that doesn't, it, it doesn't work. Like, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, and, and to be honest, I, om I, I, another person, I, we almost started a business doing that, like networking for other people because they didn't want to do it. But the, the thing about it is you could hire somebody to go out and network for your company, right? Um, if that's that one person, but from an individual, like I can't go out and represent four companies, right? Because when people saw me, they go, oh, you're this person. Oh no, you're this person. You're not, I mean, people get confused just enough if you've got two different products that you're trying to tell them <laughs> about, you know? So it's like, you know, so I think from a personal standpoint, it's your personality. It's, it's, it's your connection that you make with that other person, which is going to take the connection and, and your business to the next level. So it's really about, you know, how, how can you go out in person? And even if you're the big CEO and you don't have time, you're still networking on a regular basis, right? You're still doing personal networking. Even if it's just you talking to somebody else on a phone, it's, it's still networking. It's still building those relationships. You know, we talk about the no like trust factor, you know, and, and of course I have remember, but you know, it's, it is, that's what it is. It's all about building those relationships um, with the other people. Yeah. I, you know, the relationship part of so I know there are businesses actually that people do network. I've met those people in my networking. Um, and there's one, you know, the thought of like, okay, I have a lot of things to do. There are things I need to get off my plate. I, I can't do all of the things anymore. It never crossed my mind that the networking is the part to outsource because how is someone going to know, like, and trust me through someone else without them ever having a strong connection. I don't know that anybody else can like say my vision so clear, crystal clearly mm -hmm. uh, so that someone is so enamored with, <laughs> with me that I can never actually have this. I don't know. It just feels weird to me to even think of that concept of someone else networking for me. I think you're right. Definitely networking, um, networking for a company, right? Like we're all, the three of us go out and we gang network and we're like, okay, we're going to hit this room. We're all going to talk about the same company. That mm -hmm. makes sense. But to the, personal part of networking is pivotal because ultimately when it comes down to it, right? Like the network that you're building is so that you can funnel the, the different things in your life, business, branding, and networking for you. And if you don't know that person directly, or if you don't know, you've not made that connection, then it's really difficult to, um, it's really difficult to kind of have that. So I, out of curiosity, um, when we're talking about activating your zone of genius, I'm curious for each of you, what in what way uh, was personal networking, has that actually activated your personal zone of genius? Hmm. Well, I'll go first. Um, my personal zone of genius. I think my personal zone of genius is ever evolving. However, um, in my current, life as a coach and a teacher and a trainer. Um, I think that comfort of sitting with people and leading them on a journey of any kind of sort 
began because I had so much, I guess, interest and fun, like I was saying earlier, when I went and I met with other people. And so the act of connecting when you're a coach is really important. And so when people, I get feedback, like you're just so easy to talk to. I think that was activated and became something to be proud of. I wasn't always proud of it, as a matter of fact, um, because I, it's always amazing how one person's telling of a, maybe they were admiring the trait, kind of made me hold back for years and years and years. And so I remember being around 16 years old and hanging out with my best friend. And her father was like, you know, Andrea could sell ice to Eskimos. And I remember being like, oh, I think he thinks this is a bad thing. And, and I'm not trying to sell anything. And he went on to describe me in the room of his family, meeting everybody, getting to know everyone. And by the end of the evening, um, they're like, oh, so glad that Andrew could come to the Seder, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know, I took that to heart and I got very um, not connecty for years. Like I, I didn't exercise this thing that I like inside of me because of that one comment. I so remember him kind of, making me embarrassed that I just wanted to know everybody in the room and that I, me making it bad and then me sort of falling away from that, right? And then years later, even with my mother, my brother would sit with my mother and I, we'd be out someplace. My mother and I loved meeting people. I totally got it from her. And um, he would go, do you have to talk to all these people? And again, I heard um, that voice of my friend's father in the back of my head and I'm like oh my god here I go again this is terrible even my brother thinks it's terrible and my mother and I are like ha 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 but deep inside I was like hmm, maybe it's not so good and so it's so ironic to me now <laughs> that I I coach and I help people share but I'm you know I'm conscious of where the little voices came from and where that criticism came from but as I had to break into being a trainer teacher and a coach I had to go past those semi painful memories or ones that I had somehow made painful and remember my natural behavior right remember my a state that was very natural to me um, I probably the only person who when they're on an airplane hates when the row and nobody talks. <laughs> First of all, I, I am always like, oh, this is going to be the group of people. I have to sit here for six hours and no one wants to talk to me. And I have to sit there and pray something happens so we can get into a conversation. <laughs> I do. I'm that person. And when everyone's quiet, I'm like, I guess I'll sleep. Because especially if they look interesting to me or I want to know more about what they're doing. <laughs> what do they have? You know, and sometimes I'll try to start a conversation that you always know. Oh, they don't want to talk to me. So I have to go keep quiet. <laughs> so I drive my, my reserved child crazy. And then I have a more extroverted child who's like me. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it that way? Oh, you know, I think that, it, you know, and I look at her and she and I are just as happy as clams meeting strangers uh, and you're sort of talking to them and feeling that way out. So activating my zone of genius, I didn't always think it was a zone of genius. Now I'm very aware that the comfort I have in meeting these people makes me good at what I do as a coach and things like that. You know what I mean? So that. That is a definite in and out for me in terms of activating, remembering, and then not knowing, being so sure for a while. So, yeah, I uh, I I had the opposite opposite experience. It is I talk about all the time with social anxiety and be like being terrified to talk to people. Um, but I what I love um, about your story is. Uh, the inner genius was already in you on connection, right? And sometimes that gets buried. And I'm pulling this out because I feel like that was like a really pivotal point about your story. It's like, sometimes what you have is innately genius already in you. And there are those things that kind of maybe have blocked your light or kind of dimmed your shine just a little bit and you didn't remember. But then when you had to 
reenact those situations when you had to go back into that that time and need those tools that genius came back i love 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 that story thank you so much for sharing that colleen what about you how um how have how has personal networking allowed you to activate your own zone of genius yeah i, I was when andre was talking about that i remember my grandfather when i was little he could talk to anybody right and we were the same way it's like really like <laughs> And then, you know, there's times when I'm like, I'm envious sometimes of like, you know, when back when I used to do, uh, you know, sales and they say, oh, well, go talk to people in grocery stores or go talk to people in the mall. I'm like, yeah, no, not, not what I want to do. So, but um, what I found with me and now looking back at, at different, and, and Monica and I have had this conversation is I've always been a conduit you know, with people. So it's always, you know, and looking back, you know, even to high school and different groups, it's like, I always felt like I, I didn't fit in, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm not part of this group. I'm not part of that group. And I just didn't know where I fit. Well, one of the things that I realized over time is that the reason I don't fit is because I was always like the center person, right? So I would be able to interact with the different groups and bring people together. And then that, you know, when I was working IT in the corporate world, you know, to be able to talk to people on the shop floor and talk to people in the boardroom and and bring that information and be the conduit and and interpret along the way uh, is something that um, I found that I'm really good at. So and now with personal networking, uh, that really is is the, the key, I think, of of the genius of we were talking about uh, connecting people. So and what, you know was allow me now in, in this world of virtual and be able to connect with people all over the world. That's really just expanded my, my opportunity to be able to connect people from different countries and different uh, uh, industries and all that kind of, you know, so that is really like really sparked. And I'm like, yes, I think I really found that, you know, you talk about finding your, your zone of genius and it's, it's that being able to connect. Sorry, I'm like trying to do the controls here and <laughs> messing it up. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah, Colleen and I have had a lot of conversations, especially because I'm a part of her fall in love with follow-up experience and it has really kind of revolutionized my own personal networking uh, in, in that. And she's right. She's absolutely that person who's like, oh, you know who you need to talk to? You need to talk to this person. Um, anytime you have a problem, she's like, she's the guy who knows the guy, right? Or the girl yep. who knows yep. knows everybody. <laughs> and so um, that is probably her zone of genius for sure. Um, so, you know, what's, what's really interesting is um, as a person who is an introvert and does not necessarily uh, desire to talk to other people on a regular basis <laughs> uh, and has no real drive of, of, of connection naturally, right? Like that's not my first thought of like, let me go connect to people um, to get this. What I, what I have found for myself is that um, the personal networking has allowed me to, has allowed me to have these individual conversations with people and the inv individual conversations I'm okay with. It's the, it's the, big giant groups you walk into a room you're like oh crap there's a lot of people here i have to talk to strangers i don't know anyone is there a single face in this room that i can get to know or that looks friendly enough for me to start this this whole path um what i did not know is that i was a great networker until substantially later in life even as an introvert and someone who suffered from social anxiety like crippling social anxiety i even even in high school, right? I was a bit like Colleen or I, I knew all of the different groups of people separately. Uh, and it wasn't until they put me on homecoming court that I realized that I was popular. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, y'all all know me. I just know this person from this group and that person from that 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 group. And because I'm having interactions with this person from this group, they then introduced me to everybody in that particular community. And because I know this person from this group, they are all a part of this community. So from being a cheerleader and knowing other cheerleaders and hanging out with the cheerleaders and all of their friends and then hanging 
out with the volleyball team and all of the other volleyball, you know, we have the different things and you get introduced that way. And then hanging out with my friends who are in drama and the kids who are in, in National Honor Society, you know, and having just a few connections allowed me to be very visible in a way that I didn't actually think I, I was visible. I, I had no idea mm -hmm. that that many people knew me. Uh, and so the power of being that hub, like uh, Colleen is saying, where you don't have to know absolute everybody in the room, right? You, you, you just need to be able to communicate to a few people in strategic order to grow that number. know firsthand. And so when it came down, and I actually met through um, a networking org. Actually, we all three of us met through Team Referral Network, right? I'm the hub between the two of them. But I met Colleen through Team Referral Network and I met Andrea through Team Referral Network. Um, getting to know them in, in, in those groups where there was just the small group of people and you get to know those people in that group. And from there, you then end up learning a lot of people in their own community as well because of those interactions. Uh, I then saw, right, like, oh, wait, that same genius, I guess, that I had when I was younger of just being a good listener and getting to know one person at a time actually can be considered great networking. And I didn't think I was one of those people who would go in the room, hey, 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 you, 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 right? I thought I was just, <laughs> I'm just going to get to know one person and then maybe I'll get to know another person and maybe they'll introduce me to someone else. And so um, my networking muscles um, grew once I was aware that I actually was a good networker. I didn't think that was the case in the first mm -hmm. place. So when we talk about personal networking, uh, and, and Colleen had mentioned it earlier, uh, anybody who talks about networking, we're saying, well, it really is about liking, knowing, and trusting someone, right? Like those are the three factors to personal networking. We talk about it in life motivation, but literally anyone who talks about networking it says you got to have those three things, right? And so when we're talking about that likability, right? What are some what are some ways or some ways people can make themselves a bit more likable in these situations? And listen, this is a I just want to let you know this is a very important conversation because there's a lot of crappy things that are happening in networking <laughs> spaces. <laughs> well, we can set the record straight with this conversation right here. So, what are some things? that people can do to be more likable when they're in a networking situation. And Colleen, I'll have you go first on this question. Uh, I think that most of all, it's, it's take interest in the other person first. Like be, be interested in what the other person has to offer and what they're looking at before you start pitching what you're doing, right? So many times people go in and they're looking and, and, I know we hear this through networking, but it's like they're they're looking to get what can I get from this group? What can I get from this group instead of coming in from a perspective of, you know, what can I give to them first? You know, I always have the, you know, start with giving first, you know, give support, give, you know, what can you give? What how can you support the people who are in the room? And then it will come back, you know, so it's kind of give, give, give. Right. And then, you know, it will come back afterwards. So. Absolutely. Andrea? Um, that is, likability, I think, comes from listening well, to Colleen's point, you know, um, and that, it, it, I mean, that's sort of like the beginning when she's like, it's not about you all the time. It's not about you. You're out there because it's about them and you wanting to know them. So maybe you can be of service to them. Maybe they can be of service to you. I didn't understand uh, well I took for granted my circle of influence prior to moving to California um, like Colleen in my area who did you call if you needed to know plumbers painters mm -hmm. anybody who did stuff doctors oh Andrew's got a doctor for it. oh you need an alternative doctor oh you need to know what supermarket to go to call this lady right Oh, your kids got food allergies? She's called call this lady. It was when I moved to California and I knew nada, like nobody, that I realized, whoa, that skill, that, that acquisition of people, I call them, you know, my tribe <laughs> of, of people that could help me make and do things and just have a full life that I was used to having was all of a sudden like, and so um, I, 
it's funny, I was never an entrepreneur before I moved here. And so I had to become one. And there was this thing called networking, which seemed really big. I was like, oh, you mean go have conversations with people and like add them to your Rolodex? Like that is exactly why I'm going to do this business because <laughs> I don't know a soul and I might as well do a business and go meet some people. I honestly, that's how I went into entrepreneurship. Like when I think back to that one moment, I'm like, Lord have mercy. It's amazing. I haven't died or been, you know, whatever, but <laughs> really it cracked me up, but it, I was always like, tell me what you do. Well, how do you do it? And I wanted to know all of them because I'm like filing. Like they do this. They're good at it. Oh, they're a bad talker. No, I could never use them because they would drive me crazy. Like all of this was happening because of this back and forth conversation um, because I wanted to know a group of people that could help clean your house, wash your windows. Like I didn't know when I got here. I was like, this thing called Yelp was starting, I guess, where they had, what was the name of the other one? Mm -hmm. Angie's List. I Angie's think. List. Right. right? Yeah. And all Angie's of this list, was like yeah. so daunting in a new city that was bigger than my state. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, where, where am I? Where am I? Um, it was networking that saved the day. It was networking because I thought well enough of this person and the way they showed up and demonstrated how they did their own business that I took their referral to heart and would always use the person they recommended over um, Angie's List or Yelp. Yelp, I might go just to double check if I didn't really know them that well, but it really was huge. And I'm so happy now, years later, that I feel that same, com I think that when I finally felt that comfortable in California, is when I finally started to like California. I was uneasy until I had that cadre of people and things. And I'm so grateful in a, you know, with all the moves and things like that. I'm actually going to talk about it later today in my talk about how I was forced to step back into being a connector because I didn't know a soul. And how that turned into a business and so many liaisons and partnerships and things like that. But that's because at its essence, I was, I'm always been curious about everything to the point of distracting even myself, but that curiosity about other people, things, places, and what that knowledge can do for me and the people that I care about has been, um, I think the secret sauce when I go out, but it's definitely a, I, you know, they're, and then they're going to go, what do you do? Because I've listened to them for so long. I'm like, oh, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. i got to tell you what I do, right? Oh, right. I'll tell you what I do. And they're like, because they're like, they realize. Every time you walked out and not said anything, right? You get them next time, right? They're like, it's time to go. And they're like, oh, my God, we have to do this again. Because I've been so busy sponging, like, you know, these people in these groups. Uh, it just... That likability comes from, I, and then everyone's like, oh, she's so great. Because I just, let, I listen to them. People love to be heard, people. So mm -hmm. if you want to make friends, just listen. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what I tell my children. And uh, one is really good at it. One is very nervous about it. It's interesting to see their um, ways in the world. So, Yeah. I, you know, the... So if you're an introvert, I will tell you, superpower in networking that you are an introvert because you're more likely to not want to be the first person to say all of the words. You're more likely to want to just listen like how Andrea was saying. And that is a really likable quality. <laughs> um, what I will say is what not to do. Don't be a card dealer. <laughs> do not be a card dealer. And what, do, what is that? Uh, it is the person who thinks that they are Oprah. And they show up to a networking event and they're like, you get a card, you get a card, you get a card, you get a card. Everybody gets a card. Uh, it is, it is, a, it's, it's, it's a turn off mm -hmm. to just be long a card at you. And I've been to so many networking events, so many, I mean, uh, Colleen has over 5,000 on her resume, right? She has over 5,000, uh, <laughs> hey, when you go with you know breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know they add up, <laughs> right? And you know, I think me and Andrea are probably pulling up behind you, maybe with a three or a four thousand in, mm -hmm. in our back pockets, right? Uh, when you go to those events and you meet that and you meet those people, meet 
those people who are car dealers. Like what, how awful is that? <laughs> do, do you feel like you want to be connected to them after they're like, here's my card, here's my card, here's my card to everyone? Well, I mean, where have we been I, I mean, a person I in the last two years? Is it two years? It's two years. Well, in the last two years, not so much, but you've seen those people in the chat. Oh, absolutely. You, you know those people. I mean, we both was like, directed. here's my link. And here's my link again. And here's my link again. Oh, and just yeah, in case in the chat. you didn't They're know, here's my other time. link. And here's my other link. Oh, God, yeah. You're right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's they're they're still card dealers. They're call, still digital card dealers now. You know, call it chat change. tyranny. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> chat tyranny. Oh my god, I love that. Yeah. Chat tyranny. But you know, we've all been to those events, and it just you don't feel special. You don't feel like that person actually is curious to get to know you. You absolutely feel like if you meet with them, they're going to try to sell you something. Um, and no one really, no one really desires to be sold. Um, I don't know anyone who's like, you know what? I hope eight people come to me today to sell me their mm -hmm. crap. I've never met a person who feels that way. I don't know about you guys. Have you, have you met anybody who feels that way? Actually, sometimes when I was going to an event, I would sit and say, okay, I don't know where I'm going today. Let's make a game of this. <laughs> like, you know, before it, like, sometimes you're right. When you professionally do network, <laughs> and you're like, I don't want to go there today. I don't feel like it. Nope. I know it's my job. No, I don't want to go. And then I'm like, come on, you'll go. So then I'm halfway there. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to see how many obnoxious people are going to try to sell me when I go in. Like, honestly, like that's like, sort of like a sift and sort thing. And I would, I, I, I would like flip it around so I could come back and go, that was a great event because no one did it. And it made me want to go back to the event because the mm. people didn't do it. So you know, I had this, I was like, well, what, how am I going to turn this around? And so then I would go into the room, like, oh, these people are really nice. Everyone's chill. They're connecting. I'm going to come back. This is a good group. Because you've been to those groups where you're like, ew. And I mean, Chamber of Commerce events, love them when you're going and you're trying to meet a wide swatch of community and people and things like that. But boy, that's where the car dealers usually mm -hmm. are. They just don't know how to connect oh. at the events. <laughs> but like networking events, people have developed skills and they're trying to implement their skills. So they don't usually do it. But you always do meet a few, you know, just really depends on how, what time of the month it is. Is the end of the month? Is it the, yeah. <laughs> you know, the end of the month is the worst time. A little more. Month. Yeah, don't go. <laughs> yeah, like end of the quarter, you're just like, no, I'm not going to network. So those are times to be wary of where you're going to show up, in my opinion. But, you know, I, yes. uh, yep, right? So. Yeah, so facts. I, <laughs> I think we both, Colleen and I, both and I were like shaking our heads like a, like a bobblehead when you were like, <laughs> yeah, end of the month, the beginning of the month. <laughs> it's like, then the, then the pitches get a bit more aggressive and, <laughs> and all of those things. So. Um, so note to self or note to those of you who are watching, don't be the person who is the pitchy person in the room, uh, but be the more person who is a bit more curious uh, so that you can kind of increase your likability. Okay, so um, I'm going to kick the next question to our queen of follow-up, our follow-up fortune finder, and really kind of help us understand how, how can we build trust uh, while we're networking. I mean, we're meeting all these new people. We want them to trust us enough to give us money, right? At some point down the line, or at least give us their referrals. Mm -hmm. um, so how, do, how, how, would you, how would you say uh, building trust is, is like how to build trust? Uh, so a lot of what we just said, right? Don't be pitchy, you know, take interest in them, you know, show up for them, do what you say you're going to do, right? I know a lot of times it's like, you know, if you have something you say, oh, I'm going to connect you, then uh, connect with that person. Um, just, you know, show up, be the person that they, be the person they want to hang around, right? Because that's going to, you know, they're going to trust you if, if they, you know, if, if you're likable, if you um, do what you're going to say, you know, you're doing, you're um, showing up, you're supporting other people. Um, that's all going to build that, that trust factor. 
Oh, absolutely. Andrea, what about you? What is, what is the way that they can build that trust factor? Um, I, I, Colleen nailed it. One, if you say, let me connect you <laughs> with someone, you do it. You know, um, that I think has bought me the most con, uh, rapport with people. Mm -hmm. If, if I'm like, well, who would you like to meet? You know, I do network here, here and here. And who are you trying to connect with? And they're always like, you're asking me, who am I trying to connect with? I'm like, yeah, aren't we networking? <laughs> you know, as a reminder that we're here doing that. And so, um, cause it's not me going, Hey, I want to show you about my product or because usually I'm asking for a referral to a person, not necessarily a thing. Hi, I'm really looking to connect with other health people or whatever the ask is that day. And they're always like, well, what do you sell? Um, I coach, I, I do a bunch of things, but I'm not here to sell today. I'm trying to meet people. And that's always really weird. Cause then I'm like, I don't want to keep dealing with you because you're just obsessed over the sale to Colleen's point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they're not car dealers, but they're trying to pin me into a corner as opposed to asking me the thought provoking questions to yeah. sort of flush out how I could help them, their people or whatever. So that's also something that you get to be, a, a, you know, to have knowledge of and acknowledge, um, but really following up and doing what they want you to do or connect them to something. And if they invite you to an event and you can really come like I never over promised that I would show up, but when you do go to their events, they're like, Oh my God, you came. And cause I want people to come to my events. Yeah. So it's, it's so like the sandbox in kindergarten. I'm like, okay, if I, if I trade this toy with you, will you trade this toy with me? Yeah. Like, share, you know, share, right. If so. you share, uh, there's a more than enough for everybody. And I, I once said that at a networking event and Someone said, that's the first time I've ever heard someone talk about sharing in a networking event. I was like, we're sharing information, right? <laughs> like, I was kind of like, oi, oi, oi. Like, where, where am I? Yeah, you know, I, I guess <laughs> Colleen's so right, though. But showing up, putting in the time and, and you know, if you, yeah. I, what I love with some people, and I know Colleen probably does this. I'm surprised she didn't drop this in the, in the. So thank you for leaving it for me. <laughs> I, email or text after meeting someone you really liked goes a long, long way. Yeah. So, One of the things that I've been doing so um, the, lately, oh, sorry, I was going to say is, is asking people, what are three ways I can support you? That other, other than, because a lot of people leave with, well, I'm looking for this type of customer. I'm looking at, I like, if you just, if we just met, we don't have that no like trust factor yet, right? So asking me for a referral to a customer that's going to buy something is not a great first step, right? So I usually tell people, you know, what are three ways I can support you that is not like a sales transaction? So do you have a Facebook page I can like? Do you have a, a podcast I can listen to? Do you have, you know, an event coming up I can share? So think of different ways that you can support people so that, um, you know, you then build that no like trust that we've been talking about, you know, it's just, you know, versus, you know, a lot of people when they think networking, you say, oh, you can support me. Oh, wow. Give me a customer. Well, that's jumping the gun. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to say, cause Andrea was saying it and I've heard it once where it's like sell, sell through, not to the people you're networking with. Right. Like mm -hmm. the idea is if you are, selling that one person, you may make a sale, but it may end there, right? right. Uh, but if you can sell through them, right? Like if you can say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is how I need to be connected uh, to different people. Uh, yeah. The likelihood of them connecting you to more than one person uh, is higher than if you try to sell them in particular. And so I, I love that both of you kind of touched on that. It's like, yeah, like that's the ask is not buy my stuff. The ask is... <laughs> Who, who can, can you support me in this way or can you support me in that way as far as like collaboration and you know I love that the the grand connection is our sponsor for this particular conversation because that is exactly what they're about they're about that collaborate the collaborative part of networking and being able to kind of like um really weave the conversations in and through uh so that you are not just putting yourself out there, but you're also lifting everybody up along with you along the way. And so 
when we're talking about like, no, and trust, right? Uh, we've talked about trust a little bit and we, we, we talked about like a little bit, but that no part is really kind of the key, right? In order for you to be the hub. And you guys have both alluded to that is like, I want to get to know you so much better. So I know who I can connect with you. So what are some things that people need to share when they're doing their networking with their networking partners in order for them to really build that, like that knowledge for someone to actually refer them? Uh, and I'll, I'll start with Colleen again this time. Uh, I, th I think they, they need to understand uh, what you do, right? I think is, is, is where it comes from. It's, uh, there's so many, you know, I had a conversation today is, uh, you know, a CPA, you know, you talk about a CPA. Well, a CPA is such a broad category, like some like to do taxes, some like to do books, some like, you know, so, you know, as you're building these relationships, remember, it's not a one time, you know, you go to an event and, almost, you know, it's, it's a, it's a relationship you're building, you know, when you do these networking events, it's, it's, like I'm connecting with you, but the, the idea is I'm going to connect with you and build a relationship. So as you build the relationship, they should really understand what you do. But then um, one of the things that I always ask people is who who's a great strategic partner for you? Like Monica was saying, like, I'm, I would rather bring you a strategic partner because they're going to bring you lots of customers than bring you one person. You know, if it's, you know, a realtor, you know, once they always ask for buyers, right? Well, that doesn't do, you know, yes, I can bring you one buyer, but what if I could bring you somebody who's going to bring you a bunch of buyers? Wouldn't that be so much, you know, like a, somebody who, who works in relocation to the area? Well, they're going to bring you a lot of people, right? So make sure when you're out networking and you're asking people for support, ask for the right thing. You know, don't ask for the one, ask for how do I connect with a strategic partner? You know, so, and that's going to help them get to know you and, and me, you know, I'm a nurturer, so I'm going to also jump into the, all the family and the, and the real estate, you know, like, you know, we start, I had a conversation the other day, I was talking with somebody, we were doing a one-to-one -one, and she actually asked first, you know, well, do you have any kids? And, and, you know, so I went off and was talking about kids and I said, oh, well, my middle kid is in Vegas and, oh, well, why did he go to Vegas? You know, so you start down this road of conversation and I said, well, we went there because, he was doing MMA fighting. They've been in wrestling all their life. It's like, oh, really? I've been thinking about getting my kids into wrestling. What do you think about it? And then so we had this whole conversation of, you know, how my kids grew up in wrestling, how I like, you know, it's a team sport and an individual, you know, so which would have never happened if we didn't kind of deep, you know, dive a little deeper into the person. Right. So it's all about, you know, knowing somebody just not for what they do, but who they are. Like, what are their likes? What what do they yeah. like to do in their fun time? And I usually ask people sometimes I go to networking events and, you know, instead of the same old question of, oh, what do you do? I'll ask, well, what do you do for fun? And they're like, huh? Like it steps them back and they like they get out of that. <laughs> you know, here's my 30 second thing that when someone asks, this is what I blurred out. Right. You ask them a, a different question and, it, you know, they're like, oh, wait a minute. I got to think. And then, you know, <laughs> and they're like, well, what do you do? Well, I go to networking events. That's what I consider fun. You know, so and then you start doing it that way. So it's all about getting to know not only what they do, but who they are. And, and how they want to be communicated yeah. with and the whole, you know, value systems that they have. So. Yeah. Andrea, uh, did you want to kind of chime in on that? Oh, she took all the good stuff. <laughs> that, what do they, <laughs> so uh, what do they need to, what do you need to do to know? Well, to share uh, you hit on three things I was going to hit on, but I'm going to share how I do it. So, the first is at networking events, you know, well, what do you do? I always say, say, how do you spend your day? If you were like, what? I said, yeah, that's a good how one. do you spend your day? And they're like, uh, <laughs> and they're like, do you mean like, what do I do? I said, sure. I'm just curious. How did you spend your day? <laughs> and they're like, no one's ever asked me that. And I'm like, well, chalk it up to her first. And that gets easy it sort of breaks down walls people get mm -hmm. really comfortable with you and they'll they remember you right? they'll throw the tea and they'll be like that's the girl who's gonna ask you how you spent your day 
So there's that. Like, that's one way to get to know people and get yeah. known as somebody's going to ask you an off the wall question and you're mm -hmm. going to be stuck in a corner with her for 30 minutes, right? Or whatever. <laughs> so, um, so there's that. Um, I think it's so important when you meet people that you have a rapport with or have some kind of cross lateral, some way on your wheel of what you do, a connection, you meet with them. You really meet with them to do what Colleen just said. You actually talk to them because the conversation is going to go lots of different places and you're going to connect. And I get all these missives, not all, but every now and then I get a missive. Monica says, I need to talk to you. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, what do you do? So we have a seat. And they're like, oh my God, she was so great. And I was like, so I dutifully put the connection together because, well, someone was out networking for me. I All I better do is make an appointment and show up. And so we talk, right? Like that. And they've been some lovely chats and some lovely connection points. And um, so do those. And if people throw them to you, do those. Like those are really important to, again, that tribe of people that you're going to, who are going to know you and who you're going to know to do that additional connecting. Um, so Colleen said, you know, the off the crazy question, I was like, God, we do a lot of same things. Second mm -hmm. thing is, well, that's just to keep me engaged too. Cause I'm like, Oh, what do you do? Oh my God. I hate asking that question. <laughs> so, you know, and then really those one-to-one -one connections. Are really <laughs> and like, now we're always on zoom. Let's have tea over zoom where we used to go in person. Um, cause I love my kids. What'd you do today? I was like, talk to people. <laughs> Like, how many people? Oh, four or five today. They're like, where? All over. And now it's so funny because I'm like, I don't ever leave the chair. Like, it's so, <laughs> so different. So that is something I'm really looking forward to, to be, to get out again um, and have play dates outside. <laughs> it's with, let's, they're kind of well, we, Yeah, I was going to say, what I'm not missing is the three-hour tease because we just kept talking and talking. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, have to, we have to become accustomed and good at, uh, well, I've gotten better, even with these kind of virtual ones, to say, oh, in the short time we have together, sure. let's try to do the following. You know, like I, I, I try to set it so that we all have boundaries so we can get out, especially because now you can really schedule yourself too tight. So yeah. you have to think uh, a little smarter. Um, and then uh, attending the events. I think so we said all those are the things like attending other people's events and, you know, being invested in what they're invested in so that you get to see, like if they invite you, I have a puppy rescue. Now before I never would have gone, but then I got a dog during COVID. So now I have a whole new world <laughs> to know about. And I'm like totally ignorant. So I go to these things and I'm like, tell me about this with a dog. This is my first dog. They're like, okay. And then boom, 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 boom. You know, because then all of a sudden they are going to be my savior. They have yeah. been my savior so often. I can't even begin to tell you. So, you know, affinity groups showing up for things when people have a, a hobby really will get you to know them and them to know you. And that really builds trust in the mm -hmm. long term. It super does. I, you know, when I go to networking events, um, I really kind of try not to ask that question as well, because it really is a crappy question uh, that you don't necessarily want the answer to. Uh, but uh, people are going to give it to you anyway. It's that sales pitch moment that you're like, I, I just don't want to get stuck in another sales pitch. Um, but what, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, it, it was delayed. And so I did too many things. So hope you didn't get dizzy with that little conversion there. But uh, <laughs> um, the thing that I like to ask people is what impact are they trying to make on the world? Um, because that helps me really understand their why, like why they're doing whatever it is they're trying to do. Um, and, and I get to get a really deep and, and connected soul connection at that point, right? Like, I really get to understand why they chose what they chose to sell because it's, it's, they're selling something, right? So why did you choose to sell what you're selling? And it usually is that why behind it that they give me for that answer. Um, but the other thing is I kind of make my, state my intentions. Like, listen, I'm really only looking for people who are going to be co-conspirators in, in changing the world to be a better place. So if that's not you, 
it's cool. We can be friends, but like I, I read some co-conspirators that way, like, mm-hmm. ha, you know, like that kind of moment <laughs> uh, and that really kind of changes the conversation a little bit as well. So it's not that same stale, like, oh, well, I, you know, help this, that or the other. But what I will say, the information that you need to, you need to know. And the reason why we love uh, that Colleen is a follow-up fortune finder um, is in that Andrea is a thrive strategist and there's an acronym there. So now we have, we're curious, like, okay, well, what does the thrive stand for? Right. In, in introducing yourself to other people, if you have, we all are in a, in a similar business to somewhere else and none of us are unique. Right. Um, but really being able to early on explain that in not the same way that everyone else is explaining it is really, really, really helpful. Um, as a person who interviews a lot of speakers, a lot of someone telling me that they do uh, mindset work a cook telling me that they use knives it doesn't really help me understand how they actually impact create change in someone's lives because you know there's a lot of different ways that you can apply mindset work right and what would make you different from the next person who does mindset work is how you actually apply it so um when you're thinking about those things uh, that you describe, well, what do you do? And you're like, oh, well, I, you know, your, you know, your mindset help you really overcome the obstacles and the overwhelming feelings and this, that, or the other. Uh, my follow-up question is, really, okay, so like, how, how do your customers apply this new mindset? Because you didn't do anything other than you, you people overcome these limiting beliefs in the different you can do that as a track coach, right? The belief that you can't make it or that you can't be the fastest person, or you can do that as a follow up, right? As a follow up fortune finder, where I, I hate follow up and I don't want to do this anymore, or a thrive strategist, right? Where you really help people under means to truly thrive through um, the internal workings and how you relate to the body and your mind and your spirit and the journey that all those things come up. And I, I know that because I've networked with them very thoroughly, right? And so I know who they are. And when it's time to be able to explain, oh, I need to introduce you to so it's it the person who's referring you can really have a like multi-dimensional explanation of why you need to connect to this other person, as opposed to like, oh, you're a life coach. Awesome. Well, let me introduce you to another <laughs> life coach, right? Um, or let me introduce you to this business coach, right? It, it really gives you an opportunity to really kind of contort that. So um, I love what all you guys, what you guys were saying about like, you know, getting to like the getting to know you part. And it, I just think it would really be helpful um, I'm trying to pretty up the world here with this one conversation. It would be really helpful if you decide instead of just saying I'm, I'm a cook who uses knives, that you really understand how to explain yourself that I'm I'm a cook who takes the magic and smell and taste and in intricate details in Asian cuisine and turn it into something that your family wants to absolutely devour every single day. Well, now that's interesting. Now I'm kind of curious, well, what kind of Asian cuisine and what, what else are you doing? As opposed to I'm a cook who uses knives, right? And so that's my little analogy. I just had to throw that in there because, you know, I'm technically not a panelist in this seat. I'm technically supposed to be a moderator, but I've been, I've been itching to say that to the world. And I hope that it makes all of our, you know, we network so much. It hopes that it, in hopes that we have a funner, a, a funner, I don't know if that's a word, a better experience when we're listening to what you do. If you could just give us a little morsel of something a bit more interesting, I'm a mindset coach, or I'm, a, I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm a realtor who helps people find houses, or I'm an insurance broker who helps people, you know, protect their lives, right? Like I don't know how many times. Y'all have heard that, but I know there has, there's, there's, I would be a very rich woman if I got a, a dollar every time someone said that those sentences to me. So, would you guys agree? Like, that, oh, yes. That, that's probably the top five of the. Yeah, I, I feel for realtors and insurance agents and, and life coaches mm-hmm. who haven't made a distinction in terms of that because. Mm-hmm. It just sounds so like everyone else, and it's hard mm-hmm. to even want to continue the conversation if that's the 
the attenuated response you get from them, let's put it that way, right? Um, yeah. So, yes, there are some networking ninjas who are looking to be wowed and that not just, I don't want to say dazzled, but wowed because, wow, you are so passionate about what you do. That will yes. so mm-hmm. distinguish you from everybody else that it's hard to forget, right? Like people are like, oh, why are you a Thrive Strategist again? I'm like, well, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, okay. Really? I'm like, yep. And and so Fortune Follow-Up Finder, I love that. Like I just, I love any alliteration. Ask anyone who knows me. So that's really <laughs> tight. So I... I definitely think that that is one way to stand apart, be remembered, because you are trying to be remembered in some way, shape, or form when you network. And um, having that kind of response sticks out all the time. Or having like such a, not just clever, but whoa, that exactly describes what you do kind of title. So for sure. Yeah. Well, I, you're in the zone are- there, Monica. We're in the zone, right? And so we are rounding the end of the table and, you know, the right. three of us literally can talk all day. Because I know it's been 56 minutes already. It's crazy, right? And, but we love networking, the three of us, uh, and are um, a part of the Mink Life community. Both Andrea and Colleen are part of our, our, our tribe at Mink Life Motivation. And one of the things, so I... This, this year, I was kind of coming up with a new mantra for us as a community. And the mantra for us is real people offering real help in real time. And so if you didn't get real help from real people in real time in this conversation and you feel like you need some more, uh, please don't hesitate to pop into both of their talks today. Uh, you can go to uh, minklifeuniversity.com in order to find the actual links for that. Uh, and you can also... Uh, be a part of both of their programs. They have both amazing programs. I know for sure that they're amazing because I am a actual, <laughs> I'm not only, <laughs> I am not only a, par- a partner in that building of those things, but I am also a client of them. And I, I know for sure that uh, both of them have helped. Well, Andrea has helped me thrive. And I know for sure that I have found fortune in my follow-up using Colleen's system. And so I am honored and excited to have them as part of our tribe. And if you need a community, uh, if you are not uh, surrounded by real people who can offer real help in real time, well, guess what? Come on over, baby. (laughs) It's right here. We're we're here to support you. So with that, uh, go to www.minklifeuniversity.com and grab that. Uh, We are so excited to wrap up this particular conversation about um, personal networking. Thank you so much, Andrea and Colleen. Uh, and I want to remind all of our people, I'm supposed to bring this up, about our um, our sponsor. And I told, I promised you there was a video coming and I'm going to share it with you now. Just give me a second because, you know, technology and all those things. Um, and we will grab it right here. Let's go. I lost my spot. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're seeing it. There we go. Welcome. I welcome you to the Grand Connection. We are a virtual networking organization that focuses on business skills and education as well. We bring in expert speakers from around the world that we've curated and fine-tuned in a flow and a process each month that is themed. Teach you the skills that you need to level up your business in 2022. We also have our partner events. Where we partner with other networking organizations around the world and they bring their people to our events that you get to meet and discover the potential and possibilities to reach your grand potential. We also have master classes each month and member mingles as well. So we welcome you to the Grand Connection and you can 
attend two events for free. So please let us know at grandconnection.ca. We'll look forward to seeing you at our next event. Welcome. I welcome you to the Grand Connection. We are virtual networking. Oh, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. I've lost my compile. I'm here. Okay. She's here. <laughs> okay. There we go. We're back. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, guys. Woo! So anyway, that was Carolyn from the Grand Connections. And as you can see, uh, they are really about collaboration and networking. And they're going to be with us next week on the on the panel discussion. So you get to see Carolyn's energy uh, in person. Uh, that was a fraction of what she <laughs> what she gives when you see her trust and belief. So you're going to be uh, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, same time, same station next week. Um, but I just want to, again, thank my uh, my my co-panelist here um, and wanted to remind you that you are, I hope you're ready to activate your zone of genius. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next time. Bye.